The WWE SmackDown Women's Division has a big new addition. On Friday night, it was revealed that Jade Cargill has joined the SmackDown roster. WWE announced the news via a video package that aired on SmackDown. Jade will make her first appearance as a SmackDown roster member next week on the March 29th edition. Jade departed AEW after having her final match for the promotion in September 2023. It was confirmed later that month that Jade had signed a multi-year contract with the company. I felt like I would have never got a better start other than AEW, and that's me being very honest. I think the veterans in the locker room prepared me for the grander stage at WWE. I got a great experience there, being thrown in the water and being able to swim and survive. It's prepared me for the big stage that WWE has in the locker room, the phenomenal staff that WWE has. I mean, they have a front office like no other. I'm just ecstatic to be here. Jade made her WWE in-ring debut at the Royal Rumble this January, but had been without a brand until now. Jade made it to the final three of the Women's Royal Rumble match before being eliminated. I mean, I was just ecstatic. The locker room showed me nothing but love. I was a little nervous, but once I heard the sound of the WWE universe, I felt like I was undeniable. It was amazing when you went out there and you had that moment with Nia Jax and you eliminated Nia Jax and when you lifted her up you did something not only did you lift her up but you also posed yeah. talk to us about that well of course I always pose we know I always pose I think Nia Jax is one of the strongest women in the locker room you know so for me to go out there and just dominate her and eliminate her I felt like I was doing something big for the women's division certainly were and what about that face off that you had with Bianca Belair I know I know we're gonna see what happens I think I would rather work with the great Bianca Belair I think she's phenomenal I think she is a great representative for the African-American community. And I just, we're gonna make magic. Whether we work against or together, we're gonna make magic. Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, and Braun Breaker have also joined the SmackDown roster over the last several weeks. Next Friday, SmackDown is the second to last episode of the show before WrestleMania. The lineup includes Bianca Belair versus Dakota Kai, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus Pretty Deadly, a WrestleMania qualifying tournament bracket one finals with Legado del Fantasma versus the New Catch Republic, and the bracket two finals, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller versus the Street Profits, and, of course, Jade's first appearance as an official SmackDown roster member. In an interview with the Irish Independent, Becky Lynch addressed whether she's been able to reconcile the two sides of Vince McMahon, the person she knew McMahon to be, and the person who has had the horrific allegations made against him. To which Becky Lynch had the following to say, I don't know that person, you know what I mean? That's been hard for me. We didn't always see eye to eye, but especially in my last run with him there, and when I told him I was pregnant, he was so good to me, apart from the run-ins. But you have run-ins in every relationship, especially at that level. I only ever had a wonderful experience in WWE with Vince for the most part. So it's very hard to reconcile that somebody else didn't have that experience and that other women didn't have that experience. Especially when I had him to thank for my dream, for my husband, for my daughter, for the life that I have now. It's hard to see those two different people in my head and trying to merge them as one becomes very difficult. You're reading these horrific allegations about somebody that you look up to as very much almost like a father figure. So you have to listen to these things and that becomes very difficult because you've had no negative experience and you want everybody to have the experience that you've had because I would always love my interactions with him and that becomes very very difficult especially as a woman who has been so driven in changing the way that women are treated in wrestling and making sure that it is a safe space that we are seen as athletes that we are taken seriously that we are appreciated for our minds for our body of work and for what we do in the ring bill goldberg had some comments regarding his wwe career in a new podcast interview Appearing as a guest on Tim Green, Nothing Left Unsaid, Goldberg spoke about Asuka setting a new record for most consecutive matches undefeated as he arrived in WWE for his second run with the company in 2016. To which he said, quote, Well, a girl beat my winning streak, beat my undefeated streak, mispronouncing Asuka's name, saying Asuka was her name, some Japanese girl, and they touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak. And it just so happened that that culminated when I got there, right? While Goldberg returned to WWE in 2016, Asuka debuted in NXT in 2015, and her undefeated streak in the company continued into her time on the main roster before losing to Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 34 in 2018. When Asuka won her 174th consecutive match to begin her WWE career, surpassing 
replacing Goldberg's 173-0 WCW run, which also ignores that he lost his third career WCW match in 1997, Goldberg posted this congratulatory tweet. Goldberg also spoke about a proliferation of wrestlers using the spear, saying, and then it just so happened that every single wrestler who uses the spear in their moves, right? Pretty ironic that it happened when I got there, right? When asked what may have caused friction between Goldberg and WWE, Goldberg cited his frosty relationship with now CCO of WWE, Paul Triple H Levesque, saying, the fact that I didn't get along with Paul Levesque, which is Vince's son-in-law, I think had everything to do with it when I got there. In speaking about his feud with Triple H during his first WWE run in 2003-2004, Goldberg said, I think a lot of that between Hunter and myself was real. Jack Perry both disputes the claim that he continually apologized or asked for forgiveness in the months following his backstage fight with CM Punk at last August, AEW All In, or that there are any current plans for an AEW return. According to Jack Perry, he didn't hear from AEW head Tony Khan for two months following All In at London's Wembley Stadium. Jack said he never texted to say he was sorry and told Tony's lawyers he would not initiate first contact. Tony finally set up an in-person meeting before Full Gear in Los Angeles, where they discussed plans to bring him back last December. However, after CM Punk returned to WWE at Survivor Series, those plans were scrapped. Jack Perry, who wanted to work Wrestle Kingdom, was unable to for logistical reasons, then worked with Rocky Romero and Tony Khan to set up his current New Japan Pro Wrestling run. At this point, Jack Perry is still under AEW contract. He asked for a release, but was denied. But there are still no plans to bring him back. He hasn't talked to Tony Khan in months, nor cleared anything he has done in storyline for New Japan Pro Wrestling, like tearing up the AEW contract or his use of the term scapegoat. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.